Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cosmic Cultures. My name is Sabrina Tesco, and this is my first episode. I'm going to be sharing with you today the golden nuggets that I've taken away from Contact in the Desert 2019. Before I begin, I would like to share a little bit more about myself. I've actually launched officially before leaving for Contact in the Desert. I am an experiencer since child, and I have seen eight UFOs at different times throughout my life. I am originally from Montreal, but I don't live in Montreal anymore. However, that is my birthplace. And uh, basically, I, I now live in the Utawe region, which is right next to Ottawa, Ontario. And it is um, uh, it has been um, a process for me to uh, come to accept my mission um, as an experiencer. Um, since we're speaking of the word experiencer, let me elaborate for those who do not know. Um, the word experiencer is an umbrella word, all right? And below experiencer, it basically refers to two categories, contactees and abductees. Contactees are those like myself, who has had positive experiences. Example, who has encountered other people up on board on ships, who have been educated, who have had communications. Abductees, uh, these refer to the category of people who have been taken, uh, who have been examined, who have been poked and pricked or taken some uh, body parts uh, such as eggs or sperm and um, obviously uh, the it's not always a well it surely is not a pleasant experience uh, especially to if you're conscious and realize that this is being done by creatures uh, that are unknown uh, so i am a contactee so amongst the experiencers, I am among those who has had a positive experience. The governments are very much aware, and not just the governments, there are uh, certain organizations and uh, rich families who are very much aware, and these secret agencies, multiple different secret agencies, uh, we all know that we're not alone in the universe. We have recuperated ships and have reversed engineered them. Uh, so, so there's much that you, the public, are not aware about. And there are some good reasons why the governments did not want to reveal that. And there are some negative reasons for control and manipulation uh, that they chose not to uh, reveal. <clears throat> I also would like to highlight uh, that even though we know that the entire systems of the world are corrupt and the proof is that none of these systems are functioning now more than ever people everyone have illnesses have cancers uh how many people are homeless now the, the how many people are poor the majority this system these systems are not functioning and they're collapsing and it's a fact they're collapsing everything is collapsing as new paradigms are being created so please do not fear uh, the fact that our world is shifting and indeed some forces are going to resist this till they have no choice <laughs> and that no choice is coming up very soon. The phenomenon of the UFO reality uh, is that all UFOs are not necessarily physical <laughs> and even these beings, they're not all physical. We are not all physical. In quantum physics, our molecular structure, our atoms are vibrating at a specific rate, which gives us the impression of being solid. But are we? No, we are not. In yoga, and when I did my studies in holistic healing, we are generated by energy centers, the chakras or chakras. And each of these chakras are connected to a specific organ and specific parts of the central nervous system. In addition, all of these seven different chakras, in Kundalini Yoga, we have 10 chakras, and in other mystical traditions, they, they go up to 12 and 14 and so on. So we're going to stick with seven, okay? <laughs> so basically, 
all of our seven chakras, which are connected to specific glands and organs and to specific parts of the central nervous system, are also connected from the root vortice inside your body, the chakra. It's also connected to your auric field. Now there's different layers to our auric field. And so each of these chakras correspond to a specific layer, but all these different layers of your bodies, because we're like Russian dolls, we have multiple bodies, one inside the other. See this physical body made of this dense matter because we're here on this planet. We're made of this earth. But your soul is not physical. Your soul is not even human. I'm not saying that your soul is alien. I'm saying that your soul and my soul and all of our souls has no face. Just like God, God is faceless. There is no face to God. He is not a being. He is not a person. So basically, God is like rain. It's water. Think of it like that. We are all God. We are a part of all this source, which is water. And we are like raindrops, which we are all water, but we're individually separated. So you see, the soul is that raindrop. And the whole of water is our spirit. So spirit, energetically, we are all interconnected from the energy realm of spirit. That's our spirit. We're all one in spirit. But your soul is your individual personality, that which is reincarnated life after life after life. And again, reincarnation. Isn't it interesting how um, our ancestors have, in some traditions, have... Uh, always talked about reincarnating here on earth and here on earth, we reincarnate in other dimensions, on other planets, in other life forms. So again, to get back to who we are, are we physical? If we have seven different layers to our auric field and these layers connect to these other interdimensions, uh, that, that we're multidimensional. So there's a part of us, all these other parts of us are intangible. They're energy bodies. The farther you go, the more subtle we are. But at the core, you could see us as the core of the apple here. This is the physical realm that sustains all these beings. But all these different beings are you. So when we are visited, no matter by a physical alien, physical ship or interdimensionally with a being appearing or through astral travel and dreams. No matter which one of these methods that there is communication happening, all of these are the way that we are being communicated with. Very humbling to, to be in communication with multiple aspects of oneself and to find order and, uh, and ease at navigating this inner terrain, this inner landscape, it takes time, you know, because my first astral travel, um, I was a kid and, and it, I did not identify what happened as astral travel. It's only as a young woman, years after, that I have came to understand the definition and description of the experience itself. Um, so I'm gonna stop there. To go back to our chakras, are we physical beings? We are and we are not. <laughs> so when we are being communicated or when ships are appearing, by the way, 50% of the time ships that are appearing, we don't see them, they cloak themselves. They can make themselves invisible and they can create clouds around them. They have these technologies that are thousands and millions of years ahead of us. Their intelligence of these high-minded individuals are thousands and millions of years ahead of us. We will never comprehend their, their way of being and we will never comprehend their agendas. All different species, all have different agendas. But just because they are unknown to us, it does not mean that there is something negative in toll for us. As a society, the reason of cosmic cultures is to help everyone to assimilate, 
digest and to come into peace with our collective truth. We all live on one planet. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> no matter your uh, cultural beliefs, no matter your personal beliefs, no matter your history, your creed, your sex, your orientation, no matter, no matter any of all of that, what's really at the core here and what is most important to understand is um, that we're all one. Yes, we're all one in energy, but we also all live on one planet and we also share this collective truth. It's a part of all of our truth every single hybrid human on earth. <laughs> and I say hybrid human, because by the way, every single human on earth now, we are all hybrids. From the beginning of time, Genesis was not, no, Eve was not made by the rib of Adam and Adam and Eve. It's a little bit more technological than that, my dear ones. And again, I am not here to tell you what to believe. I am here to advise you to doubt everything that you hear. Dismiss everything. Check in, research, explore, test the waters within yourself with different exercises, and come to find what rings as truth in the deepest core of your being. This resonance is going to guide you towards what is true. So research, one, find out where are these real sources, two, go to meet people of like mind, go to all of these UFO conferences. Again, do you, do you think that people like myself go to these conferences for fun? No, we're going to get the latest statistics in research. We're going to get information to connect with other people, and as well, to meet like-minded individuals, absolutely. You know, we are not a minority. It's not true that we are a minority, the, those of us who are aware. That was true many years ago, but it ain't truth anymore. You know, 50% of Americans believe in UFOs and aliens. Do you, do you get that? Now that's only in the US, that statistic. There is more than half of population that believes, understands. I don't like the word believe because it's like, oh, no, I understand. And there are over 50% of people on the planet who understand our reality. Obviously, there's a good percentage in that who will never admit that due to being part of great organizations or work business related, whatever their position, some may choose to never reveal that publicly, but in the depths of their core and the, of their being, they know, they feel the resonance. If we are all interconnected and we are all sharing space on this planet, and this is all our reality, no matter you choose to acknowledge it or not, you are at one point, sooner or later, going to come into the realization that this kind of feels true, even if you wouldn't want that because your mind might fear that. Just know you need to breathe deeply. <laughs> Go to yoga and merge with people who are aware. And so with that said, everyone, I think I'm going to now shift into my take from contact in the desert. One thing I'm gonna start by saying, it was such a joy to realize how many people go to these conferences alone. You see, if people feel the urge and impulse to go, and they're going alone, they're not like planning with friends, oh, hey, let's go out and let's go to this conference. It's not like that. People who are driven with that deep sense of knowing, we're going on our own. We're not going to have fun. We're going to connect and to create connections because we are all one family and we're all on, we're all on the same boat here. And so by establishing connections and growing communities is the way to really bring awakening into the world for those who are not aware yet about the reality of all of our situation. So I would like to say kudos to the entire team 
Contact in the Desert was so well organized. A little bit of an incident with the DVD um, um, uh, table. <laughs> Uh, a little bit more organization is needed there because there were so many people and not enough clerks behind the desk, not a long enough desk uh, to, to be uh, So th there's just a few little bit of adjustments that are needed there. Other than that, the whole entire event is like a five-star experience in my book. And also, I would like to acknowledge all the volunteers that were there. You guys were phenomenal, so fun, so helpful, always watching over everyone, checking in. Great team. It was really a pleasure to meet all the volunteers as well. And now, um, what I'd like to also mention is that I, I have studied a lot about the uh, wellness industry, or wellness tourism industry. And uh, last year or two years ago, a member when here in Canada, pot became legal. Um, there was this new trend back two years ago where the, the new trend was uh, people traveling for, for, uh, for hemp retreats or stuff like that. I must say that uh, if there was a statistic done on the UFO and alien phenomenon, the wellness tourism industry is going to realize that we are booming, like way more than that pot hemp uh, um, a phenomenon. <laughs> if there would be people who would take the time to study these statistics in tourism, they will come to understand how there is immense growth in this department. Uh, so basically, just wanted to mention that because I find it really remarkable uh, because within the global wellness tourism industry, um, more and more for the past, I would say about 10 years, they've been noticing that more people, uh, wellness is the number one uh, on uh, in the tourism industry. People are traveling more and more and more for wellness wellness retreats, you know, detoxifying retreats, uh, reconnecting with nature. Um, and, and one of the statistics done amongst the wellness uh, retreats is that people are traveling alone again. So if you're traveling to go to a group retreat, you're meeting a group. So you're traveling alone. So more and more now we are seeing people always traveling alone. I find that fantastic. Because when I was younger and when I was a young girl, I remember people always needed to have friends or connect with people or needed their circle to do something. Oh, well, I had this in mind, but since I'm alone, oh, I'm not going to go. <laughs> well, you see, this mentality still exists today. And I find it remarkable to see that if everybody, if everyone's impulse is driving them to not even check in if anyone wants to attend a nourishing educational event. They're just going. Whoever they meet is who they meet. That's very significant, collectively speaking. I find it beautiful to witness that. And uh, so Contact in the Desert was fascinating. Uh, so many golden nuggets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through uh, just quickly a couple of the well, workshops or talks or intensives that I've been to. Um, one thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen and um, I'm going to show you this uh, article right here. And so here we go. So indeed, here you have it, dear ones. As, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, yes, the Navy has came out. Um, there's so many people of, in, in important positions that are coming out. And here with the Navy, the officials coming out, there. this is really pressing. This is very significant in disclosure. And again, we do not need the government to come and tell us, oh, it's okay now to believe in UFOs and aliens. We don't need the government for that. Disclosure is happening. It's unfolding day by day. So we don't need the government to come and tell us that, okay, yes, they do exist. We know they exist. For those who are unaware, we're, they're going to have to wait for the government because that's what they want, because that's what we've been programmed to believe. So I'm just sharing this article here because, indeed, UFOs exist and everyone needs to adjust to that fact. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're the adjusted ones. <laughs> and this was so funny. 
Nassim Haramain has mentioned this on stage as well. He was uh, talking about this article about the Navy uh, that was coming up front and uh, disclosing and uh, and everyone cracked up and uh, I did too because I, I when I saw the article before arriving at contact, I, I, that's exactly what I said in my mind. Said, Finally, they're acknowledging that we're the adjusted ones. <laughs> And the scene when he brought that point up on stage, everybody laughed. And if you've known Nassim, he has a funny laugh. I love Nassim's laugh. So it was a, a good belly laugh. Everyone really enjoyed that one. So I'm sharing that. And I'm now going to as well proceed by sharing something else. So here we go again, dear friends. Uh, I'm going to share this very quick clip here. Uh, from Contact in the Desert, uh, from the panel. And uh, here we go. Mr. Eric Von Donneken, I don't want to say you're vindicated, but you're vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, Josh, everyone knows some thousands of years ago, we were visited by beings from outer space. And these beings at that time promised to return in a far future. And now, they are back. It's about time that we, mankind, become humble and we learn we are just one of the intelligent species out there. Welcome, it is. Yeah. It truly is an amazing story with pilots admitting, really for the first time publicly, they can't stop these things. And they have no idea what they are, where they're going. Now the government has stopped short by calling them extraterrestrials. They haven't gone that far yet, but eventually they're going to have to do this. Giorgio, you're one of the most animated people on Ancient Aliens. You've had a great <laughs> guest on Coast to Coast. You've got to love this story. I, I'm besides myself because, you know, um, first of all, the people in this room and, and people in this panel, we know that the U.S. government has investigated this stuff for decades. And they've just simply said, deny, 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 deny. So this is a watershed moment that we are experiencing right now. And it is truly amazing to be actually able to experience this. Yeah. So good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Hey. And how about you, Billy? I think it's absolutely amazing uh, when you look at these ships and you realize that uh, there may not be little green people with antenna on them piloting them. It may be people that look just like us. It's very possible that a distant cousin or our star brothers could be piloting a lot of these craft. Uh, and I think that we need to come to terms with that. And I'm very happy that finally they're coming out. When I was at Iseti Ranch uh, last year, I saw about 10 to 15 UFOs per evening at Iseti Ranch with hundreds of people out there, not just me by myself, with the visible, uh, with, the, with the naked eye as also with some infrared goggles. Uh, and we were able to record a lot of them and put them up online. They're here. They're everywhere. And the U.S. government has been known because they were flying out there with Black Hawk helicopters and, uh, and F-14 fighters right over the ranch every single day. They were visible in the day and also in the night. So it's great that they're finally coming out with the information that they, you know, they, they exist uh, and that the active military personnel are saying that they're, they're there. They can see them because before it was only people who are not active coming forward. Now active military personnel saying it. It's a big deal. Excellent. Now, this is somewhat of a... And so I wanted to share this with you, and I'm going to switch back to the screen, and here we go. Uh, so uh, I hope that you have enjoyed that segment. I'm sorry about the sound. The sound isn't very uh, loud on the original video, but I am going to share the link down below uh, so that you can have access to view uh, one of the article that I have shared about the Navy declaring that we're not alone and that we just need to adjust to that fact, as well as this clip here that was taken from Billy Carson's uh, YouTube channel, Another Brilliant Mind. So Contact in the Desert was, wow, filled with delicious, delicious information. Um, there, there's a couple of things that I'm going to say. Um, I, I can't really uh, review everything, but I'm going to say that um, one highlight was uh, was meeting uh, John D'Souza. Uh, the reason why I was very interested in uh, hearing John D'Souza speak, John D'Souza is an ex-FBI agent, and he is what we call the real 
X-Man. So basically what, what that means is that uh, Joan D'Souza has been uh, dealing with the paranormal cases within the FBI. And one thing that I'm going to say, the reason why I was attracted to hear uh, John speak was because there was a time in my life where I wanted to be a cop. And I wanted to specifically work with ICE. ICE is the department uh, that works with human trafficking. Now, uh, there, there are reasons why I wanted to go down that path because of experience. I have met uh, young women uh, who have... Uh, who have had uh, issues uh, in this realm of human trafficking. And um, what, one of them um, was uh, murdered uh, in the back of uh, the um, ch uh, child group home, a group center that I was in when I was an adolescent. I won't get into the details, but I will one day share about this story in one of my episodes um, because out of darkness comes light. And <clears throat> that was a very symbolic moment that marked me deeply, obviously. So um, for these reasons and others, which I won't mention now, I wanted to become a cop, not because I want to work in the cities. I didn't want to be a regular cop. I, I wanted to be undercover. I wanted to work uh, to, uh, to cease uh, the vicious cycle of human trafficking. And what I have learned by investigating and speaking with senior inspectors, uh, teachers, uh, senior detectives, and bless their hearts and soul, and this is many years ago, I don't even remember their names, <laughs> but uh, bless them. They were very honest with me. And I've done a couple of months research and called many different places uh, where they train people. Uh, anyways, so they were very honest with me. And what a shock that was, because I at first I thought, well, are you joking? No, this can't be real. These people uh, and who did not know one another, three different sources. They were all acknowledging that this is a vicious cycle and that the human trafficking arena is actually built upon and supported and protected by what's going on inside. Uh, and that it's a never ending circle. I was deeply stirred and troubled by that. So hence in a nutshell, I chose not to go down that path because obviously if I was going down that path, it was to make significant improvement in the world and to, to better the world. And if there's, uh, nothing that can be done because it's controlled from the inside. Well, I'm not going to go down that path for sure. There's no, there's no point to if it's, um, if it's being protected to remain this way. So for that reason, John D'Souza, thank you. It was very enlightening to listen to you speak. And uh, there was a, lots of great points that he has risen, but I'm just going to share one thing. Uh, it was really beautiful to see well, beautiful. It was really inspiring to see that the FBI do not blacken out information on their documents. You know how the government and uh, NASA and, and other uh, secret organizations, uh, you know, they keep all these files and all these documents, but how many documents? 75 to 80 percent of the words are all blackened out. <laughs> like we got these tons of rows filled with files, filled with documents, everything 80% blackened out. Oh no, that doesn't look suspicious. <laughs> Why in the world keep all these documents with all these blackened out information, which obviously does look suspicious. Why hold on to it with a couple of words here, a couple of letters here and a couple of numbers there? It doesn't say anything. Why not just shred the document, burn it, do something? But there's so many files and so many rows of these documents that are all blackened out. I found it very intriguing to see that the FBI doesn't blacken out their information. I actually took a picture of that and he was very generous to share a link um, which uh, directs us directly to the FBI vault to see more documents uh, in regards to the fact that we're not alone in the universe. And this is an ex-FBI agent. So that was very inspiring to uh, hear him share this information. Uh, another highlight indeed, well, the main course for me personally, 
I was really aiming there to go and meet in a sim. <laughs> there, there's been a process. I've been wanting to reach out to the sim and have tried to, but you know, he's very busy and travels a lot. Uh, meeting Nassim and uh, hearing him speak and holding the ark in my hand for three hours was transformational. It was such a revelation. It brought on so much deep, deep emotion. I felt contentment. I felt like I've landed home. And I'm not going to get into this because um, when I'm saying this, this refers to my project that I've been working on for 19 years. So when I held the technology of the art crystal, I was like, oh, my God, definitely. These two projects go hand in hand, speaking about mine and Nassim's. Nassim is inspiring so many people out there in the world. And so many people have great, great philanthropic uh, uh, projects and, and sustainable ideas for sustainable living and free zero point energy technologies and, uh, and ways to cure uh, such as Emery Smith. I'm going to speak about Emery in a moment. Uh, but Nassim is really such a treasure. He is a, such a humble man and so centered in his heart. It is such a joy to be in his presence again. <laughs> <laughs> I say again because I'm just being playful here. Um, Nassim definitely feels very um, familiar to me, uh, but this is a personal story, so I won't get into it. Nassim is loved by many people for many reasons. And if the establishment of physics has rejected Nassim's findings, well, it is because there are, I don't know if it's 70 or 80, I don't remember, Nassim has mentioned this in one of his videos, 70% um, we'll say, 70% of all his theories and, and equations have all turned out to be right. Even if the establishment, because uh, he was approaching to find these solutions in a different way, and the establishment doesn't acknowledge that. So anyways, um, all that to say that Nassim is right on, He's on the right track, and it is uh, so enlivening to see how many people are becoming independent researchers. Many experts in many various fields are all choosing to become independent with their research and studies. And we don't need these big organizations to tell us because all organizations have policies in place to protect themselves, and they all have an agenda. The government has an agenda. And here we are speaking about the aliens and their agenda. Everyone has a secret agenda. The police has their secret agenda, the military, the scientific community, the medical community, the, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical community, uh, even our grocery, our food, even in the um, uh, process of making our food and how animals are treated. Oh, there is so many uh, hidden agendas. So we need to embrace the fact that uh, we are definitely moving forward. If you don't know who Nassim Haramain is, research his name, go on YouTube, watch his videos. Nassim Haramain, he's amazing. I'm going to put a link down below for you to uh, discover his website, Resonance Is. Uh, so with that said, I'm now going to jump into speaking about Emery Smith. Emery Smith is an exceptional person. He indeed was a part of the military, and he uh, he also is the uh, gentleman that has done the um, sample tissue analysis on the Atacama bean with Stephen Greer. So for this uh, serious uh, um, documentary, he was the one who did the uh, tissue sampling. There wasn't an autopsy done. It was just tissue sampling. Uh, Emery has a long background in laboratory work, in finding all kinds of cures, of working different types of technologies, all which are advanced way beyond anything that all of us here can understand, because it's all that all of this technology comes from the aliens. It comes from the recuperated ships that the military has 
um, recuperated at multiple occasions. We have reverse engineered these ships. There is no questioning why in 100 years our civilization has boomed like never before. There is a motivation behind that. And the inspiration comes from the alien phenomenon, comes from these crafts. So there's a lot that's being said about this online. I'm not going to get into it. But I just wanted to share a little bit more about Emery Smith. <clears throat> I'm certain that many of you have seen the television show Stargate. You can choose to take this or reject this, whatever, it's okay. We are traveling already around the galaxy. We do have Stargates, more than one here on Earth. And there are secret, 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 secret programs within the military which military people, personnel, are not even aware. They don't, they think that they know everything, but there are different levels of security and departments. And Emery Smith is the real deal. What I mean is Emery Smith has passed through these stargates and has stepped foot on other planets. For he wants to heal every single illness every single cancer, every person on the planet, no matter which country you live in, Emery Smith has declared that he wants to heal every person for free. So believe it or not, it, that's up to you. I'm just inviting you to research in order for you to find more information about this. And with that said, I'm, I'm now going to share a little bit more here. I have my document out. Uh, what I also found extremely interesting is that um, I also uh, went to a talk with R Russell Targ, who uh, basically he was talking about third eye spies and the true story of the CIA and psychic spying. Well, it was really interesting to uh, to hear his uh, story, because, uh, again, if we're talking about the FBI, about the CIA, about these underground secret programs with the military, you know, uh, now look at in, in the newspaper, the article with the Navy coming out. All these important people in all these important positions are all coming forward to tell their truth, which happens to be all of our collective truth. And still today, people are resisting? No, they're not. Like I said earlier, there's more than 50% of people who understand that we're not alone in the universe. We are no longer a, mi a minority. If you believe that, it's false, and that is falling off. Come and welcome. Step your foot into this new paradigm. So it's really fascinating. I'm going to share a little bit more information as well, uh, such as um, uh, another wonderful conference that I, I've been to is, uh, let me see, where are you? Uh, Communication with non-human intelligences. What are they trying to tell us with Kathleen Martin? Kathleen Martin is the niece of Benny and Barney Hill. And um, being that I am a, an experiencer, I indeed was uh, interested in going to listen to her talk. And it's um, very inspiring to see how many people um, uh, are experiencers. Um, I've heard of Kathleen's uh, story before, her work, uh, but I wasn't aware that she too was an experiencer. So I urge you, uh, everyone, to research her name, Kathleen Martin. Uh, she is in charge of the ERT, which is the Experiencer Research Team with MUFON, uh, and she's a lovely lady. Um, I also uh, returned again to meet with Mary Rodwell. Uh, I met Mary Rodwell in Montreal in 2006, 2007, 2005. I've seen her more than once, actually. Uh, in Montreal, we don't have alien conferences, uh, but the, in the integral Institute of Human Sciences, uh, the Spiritual Science Foundation, I believe, they create annual conferences that integrate spirituality, science, consciousness, and uh, folks from the ET phenomenon. And so that is where I have met um, 
uh, Mary Rodwell, as well as uh, where I uh, where I encounter Stephen Greer and um, and um, uh, <laughs> Sean David Morton, as well as uh, James Gilliland, as well as um, Albert Weber. So, anyways, I'm naming a few, but <clears throat> there's a lot more, uh, as well as JJ Hertak and Desiree Hertak. Uh, I've met these people in these conferences because I've been attending those conferences in Montreal. Um, I still I I believe they're still ongoing. It's been over 20 years now. Uh, so anyways, to return back to um, to these wonderful conferences, another great one, which was uh, with Michael Sala, uh, Traversable Wormholes, Stargates and the Secret Programs. So basically, he was indeed acknowledging that uh, Emery Smith is the real deal. And Emery had all his certificates and diplomas and military papers and, you know, all, all documents are there and photos. And so he is the real deal. Michael Sala is such a, a in-depth person. I very much enjoy um, all of his material that he is sharing. I urge you everyone to please uh, do research online, find out the truth for yourself. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Just let, allow your uh, 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 curiosity to be stirred and go out, seek the answers and do yourself a favor. Watch Ancient Aliens at least once a day. Start thinking about how is it that you can uh, in, implement this into your children's education. Uh, it's their future. You know, th they're going to be living in space. They're going to be on Mars. They, they can choose to live here too. Um, however, we, we are going to be facing some destruction and the population is going to be greatly minimized here. Then we need to come to, at peace with that. So unless we're going underground, and that will be saved for another episode, there are countless communities underground. We are co-living this planet with other beings. And they are in Antarctica, they are under the oceans, they are inside mountains, and that is just a fact, a jest. <laughs> Do your research, folks. And again, if you have any questions, I invite you to please send me an email. I'll be more than happy to direct you to a list of videos for you to find out your own answers. I'm not going to give you answers. I'm just here to stir everyone's curiosity. So with that said, uh, another great talk was hearing Michael Johnson speak about neuroscience and the interdimensional communication. Uh, so this is uh, another big part of the UFO phenomenon that people are not really understanding. They're interdimensional. And how many people astral travel? When we dream, dear ones, See it like your cell phone when it's plugged in, it's recharging. When you're asleep, your body is, it's like, or think of a boat. You're sleeping, your body, the anchor is down. You're, you're, you're resting, you're in rest mode. But your soul navigates forever. Your soul never sleeps. And we're moving throughout different dimensions in different places in space. We are eternal. If you believe in reincarnation, you know that the soul never dies. So you know it never sleeps. So if the body, if the, if the brain is programmed to just uh, remember 10, we could say 12%, 15%, imagine if we would remember everything. We're supposed to not remember for specific reasons, which we are all unaware. But when we are dreaming, we are traveling into other realms. Your soul, remember, if we have seven layers to our auric field because we have seven vortices of rotating, spinning energy, and that is all being circulated through the sushumna, which is our central uh, nadi channel, along with the ida and pingala, we are all energy. And so when you're sleeping, that soul, that one part, one of your people, one of who you are, is traveling into one of those seven layers of dimensions or others. Again, we don't know everything about that other side yet. So I just would like to invite you to consider that, that in dreams, when, when you have had repetitive dreams, it means something. And what about one-time dreams? There's countless dreams that we have just dreamt once and never remember, but there are also some dreams that we've dreamt of only once and it deeply impacts your being. 
Why is that so? Is because that one dream was very significant and it was tangible because you were all there and you remembered when you came back in your body when you awoke. So I'm saying this because we are indeed interdimensional and to be communicated with does not always mean that we are being taken or invited onto a ship. <clears throat> I'm going to say one thing that Nassim Haramain has mentioned in one of his talks. I don't remember which one. When he said this, this resonated deep in my core. He was saying something to the extent of in order to um, travel. Um, it's, um, let, me, let me rephrase this. He was saying something about entering, um, entering inside our black holes. What I'm trying to say is that when we astral travel, everyone defines the same uh, uh, symptoms, we could say, that you felt separated from your body. All of a sudden, you felt floating above yourself, seeing down onto yourself. Um, but actually, are we separating from our body or are we going inside the black hole inside of our atoms? Nassim Haramain said something to that extent, and I'm going to expand on that once I have more information because I want to research a lot more about that, only because every single cell in my body were buzzing when he said that. So when we think of astral travel, it's not like we lift up and look up, look down onto our body, but if we are all one as above, uh, so below, and as within, so without, maybe we're going inside the black holes inside of our atoms in order to disappear and reappear in other locations, no matter if it's astral or even physical. Anyways, just wanted to stir again uh, your curiosity. And so with that said, uh, I, I appreciate the fact that I'm mentioning this because a lot of people are stuck on the nuts and bolts phenomenon. So this is why going to events like Contact in the Desert and to hear all of these amazing speakers is a way for you to fuel your vessel. You deserve to know the truth. It's your birthright. Contact in the Desert is most definitely a must see. I highly recommend everybody to consider attending for next year. And with that said, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I've been talking for over an hour now. <laughs> and I just really wanted to say that Contact in the Desert is so filled with information that I, I am going to be sharing a lot more about nuggets throughout my next future episodes. So in the meantime, everyone, I wish you a fantastic day. And again, welcome to Cosmic Culture's first episode. And there's going to be many more episodes coming soon. There is so much information to share. And with that, I say Satnam and Namaste. May the ark be with you. <laughs>